Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at another modifying sequence as we explore the standard template library or the STL. And again, this is part of the algorithm library. But before we dive into that on our favorite website, CPP reference, as we usually do, I want to go ahead and just show you the problem that this particular algorithm is going to help fix. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So what I've got set up here is some code that we usually write, something of this sort of pattern. I've got a vector, I've got some ints, and maybe I'll do some operations and then print out that particular vector here. And again, since it's just integers, we don't have to worry about anything fancy here in our range-based for loop as far as remembering to print out by reference or making this const or anything. We're just going to copy them because they're ints. That's fine for this video, but I'm glad you remembered. But anyways, with that said, let's go ahead and just set up this problem here. And let's go ahead and say we have some integers like this. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, if I go ahead and run this program, it's going to compile and, well, it's going to run perfectly fine. But the issue with this particular solution is that this may not scale well. Okay. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say I need 100 values now. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or whatever here. And usually when I initialize something, when I'm trying to initialize something like this vector here, I'm probably putting in zeros in it. And for the purpose of this video, let's just say that we have 100s. Okay. So there's no way for us to really guarantee in modern C++ when we have some heap allocation, what's actually going to be in that memory. Again, that's a little bit of a cost for us, right? So uh, the idea being that we don't initialize in order to get a little bit of extra performance out of our systems. Now, I'll go ahead and say that's probably a good idea to initialize our memory anyways. And then again, the problem is, what if I have 100 or 1,000 or more of these values? So let's go ahead and clear out these values and go ahead and show how to do this. And again, maybe I'll do something clever here, like reserve, you know, some capacity here. Let's go ahead and say 100 values. And then I'll write a for loop here, something of this nature here. I less than, uh, let's put in, you know, 900 values here. And we'll go ahead and in our particular array, we'll push back those values. And we won't have to allocate since we've already reserved the 100 values here. Okay, now I should be able to compile this. Uh, oh, and if I uh, spell reserve properly, not reverse, there we go. Then, again, if I count these, we should have all of our values here. Now, again, though, I've already made this mistake here, and I'm glad I made it, so I'm going to leave this in, where I did want to zero initialize this. So, again, I have to go back here and make sure I put in a zero. And, hmm, let me, well, did I already mess this up? Yes, I did. Okay, because I changed my mind here that I had 900. So really what I meant to do, even though I thought I was being optimal, well, I need to change this value to 900. Okay, so you can kind of see the point I'm getting at here, whether intentional or not. I'll leave that for you if I made those mistakes. But, you know, there's too much setup going on here. Now, in the name of performance, you can usually throw out many of these rules because you just have to know what you're doing. And if you find out that this is a bottleneck in your program, you can fix it. But we've got a better operation for this type of initializing a data structure here. So let me go ahead and show you that with our favorite website, CPP Reference. So we're going to go ahead down to the algorithms library here. Go ahead and scroll uh, past here. And previously, if you've been subscribed, you've seen we've looked at a lot of the non-modifying sequence operations. And today we're going to look at the modifying sequence operations. So actually modifying our containers and data structures. And specifically today, we're going to be looking at fill here, which copy assigns the given value to every element in a range. OK, so let's go ahead and pop in here. And we can see that this will work with any sort of range that has a, um, or rather any container that can take in a forward uh, iterator and then be able to populate that container. OK, so that's the idea here. The complexity of this depends on how many elements that we're filling. So the distance between the first and the last element here, which could be computed with the distance here. And um, there are some policies here. Let's go ahead and see our execution policies. Um, let's see if we can actually parameterize this. Um, yeah, we've got uh, down here for our execution policies, the different templates. Actually, we'll hold off on that uh, for now. Uh, but let's just go ahead and see how to use this fill. Now, here's a possible implementation of uh, fill itself. And as you can see what the algorithm is doing here, if I go ahead and highlight that, and then if I bring in our code here, and if I highlight this, this looks an awful lot like effectively what we're doing here. We're using some iterator here, right? Here's our forward iterator here first. 
and we're basically moving it until we get to the last element of our range, which for us, you know, we usually put in the value here. Now, again, I could have made this safer here. I probably should have done inst uh, length or size or, you know, something of that nature here. Let's go ahead and do that here. Uh, oops, it is uh, size. There we are. Um, and that avoids, you know, some of the errors here. But again, if we can do this with a function fill and it's very clear what value we're popping in here, that's a good idea. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this. And I'll go ahead and comment out this code here that we don't need. And I can still do this reserve trick if I want here. That's totally fine with my fill. I'm going to get rid of it here uh, for now. Uh, and let's go ahead and set up our uh, iterators and use uh, this algorithm here. So I'm going to include our algorithm library again, because if I scroll up here, I want to use fill and that's defined in algorithm. And this is basically how we use it here. So I can use the uh, member function versions if I want here. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit more generic for the purpose of this video, because I want to go ahead and show you that we can uh, switch the data structure here. I'm going to use begin uh, and end ints, and let's go ahead and fill in the value. Uh, let's just put in 999 just so we can see that it fills in here. Okay. Um, and let's go ahead and, uh, oh, this is an ints here. This is a standard fill. There we go. Uh, that should do the trick here. And we're good to go here. Uh, if I run this, we should see, ah, actually if I, uh, if I, uh, reserve the memory here, um, in combination with setting our size, let's go ahead and do this here. Uh, so let's give a, a size for our uh, vector here. Again, the 900 elements. Um, and again, we, we can be optimal with this. Let me just pop this in here uh, since we did that for the sake. Um, uh, actually, I keep going back and forth here. Let's let's get rid of it here because I don't want to overcomplicate this. I just want to show you that it works. And then if that becomes a bottleneck, we can speed it up. Uh, but anyways, the point is that we can run it here and get our 900 values filled with 9999 here. Okay, so that's very nice, very nice that we could do this in just one step here. And if you want to take a little bit of an, a look or a tour of the implementation of fill, you can go ahead and look at the GCC library in at the STL algo base.h. You can just search that in this uh, GitHub repository here and just do a search for uh, fill here. And you can find some of the different uh, specializations and the implementations for it. Now, depending on your type, I think for char, at least in this uh, GCC implementation, it is trying to be smart. I think it is using memcopy here. Let's see if we can actually try to find it here. Um, we may or may not be able to find it here. We'll just do a little bit of a searching around here. Um, yeah, this is a little bit uh, hard to read here. Let's see here. Fills a range with the same value. Aha, okay, here we are. Function uh, fills a range with copies of the same value for char types filling contiguous areas of memory. This becomes an inline call to memset, okay? So I just wanted to go ahead and show that, you know, sometimes the STL algorithms are kind of nice to use and can still be uh, performant. There could be little specializations in these types of things that you do. And again, as I mentioned, I can still use this reserve call uh, after here if I want to for this uh, vector. All right, so there we go with our example of fill. Now, of course, again, depending on your behavior that you want for your application, uh, we have another uh, operation here. Uh, so let me go ahead back here and we have fill n because again, um, I might only want to fill the first n elements in my particular uh, class here. So again, the parameters um, where I'm going to uh, start here where uh, or how many uh, elements that I want to modify and then the value that I want to go ahead and populate. So you can see the difference with this one is that it just takes in one uh, iterator here and you could effectively use this um, fill n. So let's go ahead and just modify our data structure here. Let's go ahead and say fill. Let's get the end of our data structure. Um, actually, let's get uh, let's just do it from the beginning here. I'm just going to make it a little bit shorter. Uh, so that we can actually see our elements here. Uh, let's just put in 10 elements. Uh, let's fill the first um, five, though, with uh, zeros now, okay? Because maybe they're in some default state here. Okay, so let's go ahead and recompile this. Uh, um, oops, let's see what I did here. Uh, probably just missing a parenthesis. Oops, or missing a uh, fill underscore n there. There we go. Copy and paste error. 
And let's go ahead and get this around here. And we can see the first five values are now zeros here. OK, so a little bit of a convenience. Uh, if you only want to populate some of the values, you have that option. Now, if you don't want to put in zeros or the same value, we'll talk about something in a future video where we can generate values or a sequence. Uh, and that might be useful if you do want, you know, a sequence that's monotonically increasing, you know, one, two, three, four, five or whatever. Uh, and I'll show you that or some other, you know, pattern that you would like. Uh, but that's the fill algorithm and it modifies the actual container here. Now, again, just motivating the standard template library uh, a little bit here. Let's go ahead and look at, um, you know, when I'm working with these fill algorithms, uh, and again, we have our hierarchy of algorithms that we've looked at, uh, again, when we looked at iterators. So I've got an output iterator here for fill n here. Um, and let's just go ahead and take a look at what fill had. Uh, let's see, if I go to fill here, this needs to be working with a forward uh, iterator here. And if I go, uh, I got to go a little bit back here. This is a little bit of review from our previous videos. Uh, so if you haven't watched those, make sure you watch the uh, iterators library uh, videos or, or we talk about iterators, right? You can see our different iterator uh, categories here. And you can see that, you know, with, with output uh, iterators, again, sort of in, in power, right? I would say forward iterators and uh, output iterators aren't as... Uh, right, we we don't have uh, the strict requirements to have like random access or or these types of things. Now, why am I showing you this? Well, you know, those are sort of on the the bottom of the hierarchy, uh, so to speak. So if I look at one of our data structures, like a forward list, which I would say is a relatively simple data structure, just a singly linked list here. Um, and if I look and see, you know, does this have a forward uh, iterator? It does. Okay, so we could actually change this data structure here. Uh, let's actually include in a forward list because for whatever reason we decided to change this data structure. Now let's just go ahead and make a switch here. Forward list. And uh, looking at our code here, let's get everything on the screen here. We should be able to just be able to effectively swap out that uh, data structure here. Okay, so let's go ahead and give it a try here. Let's make sure that we save, uh, compile. Give it a run and we get the same results here, right? Because we have uh, forward iterators available here. All right, so this works nicely with any type of data structure that you're working with. And again, that's why I was hesitating a little bit to you know, put in these reserve or you know, other things that we might need here. Um, but uh, you know, this works out quite well and you know, fill is one of the simpler algorithms. All right, folks, so with that said, Feel free to watch this lesson on YouTube or on the site of mine, courses.mshaw.io, if you'd like to track your progress. It's free to sign up for the C++ stuff, and there's other you know, fun courses you can otherwise check out here. And I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I hope you're enjoying this series, and thank you, as always, for your time. Go ahead and practice some of these algorithms, and we'll see you when it's time for the next one very, very soon here. Take care, folks.